grand entrance and I ruined it. Hey guys, good morning everybody.
careful, and I did a big yoga breath and went, <laughs> and then I passed out. <laughs> like Mike said, and I'm literally like just, I, 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 it looked like those anti-drug movies. <laughs> like the room spun, and everybody it was like, I'm not kidding. There was a Moog synthesizer yeah. in my head. That's reading and, Rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> And they're like, let's sit down. And I'm like, no, if I do, I'm gonna die. Like I really thought I was gonna die. And 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 I'm spinning, and I just went, whoa. <laughs> and everything equalized. And I said, can you please play that back? And so I go, whoa. And I said, please put it in the movie if you can. And there's a scene where Hulk hits his head on the uh, cave and goes, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I had I had very similar experience, not as fun. Um, I was in a booth that was smaller than this table and passed out when I was screaming on Dragon Ball. Oh, uh, everyone, oh, yeah. And it's because I was early on in my career, I didn't know how to use my voice as well as I can now, and I, I would not do that to myself now. But at the time, I was like, go for it, man. And I went for it, and I just... There was no place to fall, so I was just sort of slithered down the walls. <laughs> At least they're padded. And they were padded. Yeah. You were very lucky, actually, you didn't hit your head. Yeah, yeah. I know, yeah. yeah. I might have hit my head, I don't know. <laughs> what happens, you know? Uh, I got, uh, during uh, an anime called Assassination Classroom, I play a character named Itana. He doesn't yeah. speak very much, he's pretty quiet, actually. He's very, like, reserved, he's just small in speech. Uh, so, uh, Afia was directing me, and she's like, alright, we're gonna come in and do this one cue. And as I go to close the booth, I hear plunk. As I close the booth door, I was like, oh, that's weird. Anyway, oh, yeah, Arba, uh, uh, you know, Koro Sensei. And that's it. And then I leave. And as I go to leave, the door just goes, bang, 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 bang. and I'm like, oh, that's weird. Uh, <laughs> very funny, you guys. Like, the door's locked. And they're like, no, seriously, like, open it, open it. And I can't open the door. The, the latch, I guess, whatever, had fallen through. And so we're, we're, we're kind of tugging at it. And this has never happened to me ever in life. So I was like, it's cool. We'll get it open in a few minutes. Uh, it was like at the half an hour, 45 minute marker where people were coming in laughing and taking pictures. Because you know it's friends, right? <laughs> so like Cliff comes in there and like, you know, Shape and he was walking on my ear, he directs me a ton. He was like taking selfies with me. Uh, was, I started pretending like to go feral. I was like taking my shirt off. And, like, <laughs> and, you know, I'm running out of coffee, haha, <laughs> it's all very funny. Until around about an hour mark heads and then I'm like, Guys, I kind of have to go to the bathroom. Uh, like, which one? I just start to, you start to determine like what corner is going to be your pee corner. Your pee corner. Like you just need to figure it out. I was looking at the T bar. I was like, can I bust through here? Like, because I start to get a little claustrophobic. <laughs> which I was like, okay, <laughs> it's like a Baldur's Gate. It's like new new ability unlocked. Claustrophobia. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was listening to everyone through the cans, and Afi's like, here we go, we're just gonna leave you alone for just a bit, just don't worry, we'll be right back, okay, so he's the restroom, because Afi was being super sweet, she's like, I don't want to leave you alone, I know it's kind of weird to be here, so sorry, we're gonna get called to the fire department, and it's, at the time, uh, Funimation, the F word, we don't say that anymore, okay, uh, <laughs> uh, and now crushing roll, but, the, uh, they were like, we're gonna call the fire department, we can't get you out, we'll, we'll get you out, um, they leave the room, and then I start hearing my heartbeat, when you're just alone, and there's nothing, and it's silent, I was like, Check the floorboard. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, I didn't check the floor. For what? Check the floor for what? Oh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't like a ground floor. But I lose my, I started to lose my goddamn mind. I was like, oh my god, I'm going to start destroying things in this book. And it's like a strange feeling to want to get out. Uh, so I like, you know, just do my kind of some reading stuff. Anyway, uh, long story short, too late, Brianna Palencia's uh, brother, uh, Gino, Gino, comes in and he slides a couple pieces of a. Uh, if you guys, anyone who built computers, there's like these little thin pieces of metal that cover like where the PCI ports go. Yeah. Uh, anyway, where your graphics card goes in, you take those. He was like, I'm like, just give me something long and like slender. And uh, I freaking lockpicked my way out of there, you guys. I like went and I like, moved the latch little by little by little. I slammed it and I moved it and I turned it. And then you heard the Skyrim drum rolls. I lockpicking un leveled up. And I was like, <laughs> It was the big one. It was uh, back at Old Funimation. It was toward. It was one from the end. It was uh, where we did Assassination Classroom. That oh, was the built in. It was built in. Oh god, dude, I couldn't get out. You were like, anyway. But so, how long was it? How long were you in there? Yeah, about an hour. And did you ever go back into that room again? Yes, but they, because they removed all latches from the door because of me. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, that was very stressful. I'm like it was. And they're like, we're not, not going to sue us or anything, are you? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good. So anyway, yeah. If 
you ever want to see, it's hashtag free Rico R-I-C-C-O. And you'll see everyone's like tweeting about it, just being silly. But just know that I was so close to needing to be. Anyway, yeah. Wilson's had a Oh yeah, I was trying to that's something to talk to. Oh yes, hello. Hi. Hello. So, uh, my question is for Fred. How does it feel to be the actual voice for some Looney Tunes? Oh. Ooh, I'll tell you, it's real fun! I love that! I got the earth, why for I do enjoy it. It's my favorite cast. Yeah, it's an honor. I mean, I think that uh, Yosemite Sam was probably one of the first voices when I was a kid I started to just play around with. I never thought I'd do it, though. You know what I mean? It was just because I loved the voice. I thought it was fun and energetic. Uh, kind of can't believe it. And then we're in a room together doing it. We'll look at like Daffy and, and just look at each other like, this is weird. You know, like, that's coming out of you. And that's, this is our childhood. It even predates us, you know, by many generations. And so it's really been um, fun to carry on the tradition. Uh, I also love what the Looney Tunes have done recently, uh, in every incarnation, but like recently they've kept the traditional aspect of it, but they've pushed it edgy wise that kept what Looney Tunes was in the beginning, but now it's just today, without, without modernizing it. You know what I mean? They just, they've just moved it into that same insane edge that they really brought it back nicely. So, it is an honor. I mean, perhaps make a very nice to do. Thank you. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a huge honor. Really Aww. Yeah. I love the new Space Jam movie. What's that? I love the new Space Jam movie. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, thank you. I love <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, it's, I, that's one of those jobs as a voice actor. You just pinch yourself. You can't believe it. Hey, hi. Uh, my question is for Eric. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm texting my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, my, my daughter has that very shirt, and I, she might wear it today. So I'll be What's up? Um, so, how did it feel for you uh, coming back to Fruits Basket in 2019? And what were the similarities and differences in the role of... I, I, didn't, I didn't play... You were a guest. Oh, that's the second one? Yeah, of course I did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it was... Uh, to be honest, I was shocked. I was shocked that they managed to pull it off and bring back that original cast. Um, it was a lot of fun. It, it was. It's the difference between... I mean, all of us up here are trained actors. Like, this is what we've done our whole lives, right? And you still learn every day a little bit more than you knew the day before. So, to have like a 15-ish year break, uh, where I was doing that character at the beginning of my voiceover career, and then come back so long later and do it again, I felt like I could do the job better than I did the first time. So, I really worked at that even changed the voice a little bit than, than I had the first time and really worked on the performance. But the, the most unique thing was that we actually get to finish telling a story. Whereas the first time you had one season, but the second time you have your three seasons and you don't realize until you get toward the end of the third season that really the story has been mostly about that my character um, and, and seeing his growth the whole time. You get everybody else too, but... I remember sitting on a, one of the uh, one of the episodes toward the end, and Caitlin Glass, the director, she's like, she's like, are you understanding that the story of this show is your characters? And I'm like, well, I am now. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I would have been told. Right. So you, you didn't read the full like manga before working on the show? No, I don't read the manga of the shows that I work on because I need a break. You know, and if, if I read manga for the shows that I've done, which fortunately have been very uh, big, long-running shows, that's all I would do, is read the manga and voice act. And I gotta eat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, Rico. It's good to see you again since my HeroCon. It's good to see you, too. Um, finally get to meet you. Finally, Eric. Hey! <laughs> um, I just want to say three things to each of you. First, Rico, I've actually took your advice, and I've watched you total times as a girl and Blue Lock, and I'm loving it. And Eric, I love you as Kirby, and you too as Benny Marvel with the slime. As Fred, you were in a game I just uh, finished called Spy Racers, Fast and the Furious, so I, I repeat it. 
Oh, anyway, I have a question for Rico and each for Rico and Eric and one for all three. My Rico, uh, what was your most funniest moment playing Jun Junichiro? Oh, Junichiro. Um, yeah, yeah, on Tomo-san. I got you. You know, in the series. Hi, Lexi's a dear friend of mine. Uh, uh, but one of the most funny moments I think you guys haven't seen. It's a lovely little rom-com where you actually get a beginning, middle, and end. That's a big selling point. Um, <laughs> but also, Lexi's just tremendously funny. Um, there's a sequence where, you know, the will they, won't they sort of moment of like, ah, you know, my best friend, I just thought you were a dude my whole life, it's all good. Um, and like, they're eating ice cream, and they're just being cool, there's a moment like in the sea where some some creeps kind of like hitting on Tomo, and June shows up, just like emerges, like the swamp monster is like, what are you doing? And like, June runs away, and so she's like, oh my god, it's so hot, you're like defending me. He's like, oh no, I was just trying to like back you up, because you're my bro. And she's like, Rage. And so they're together, she gets a, has an ice cream cone, they're eating ice cream together, June's like thinking about stuff and some falls on Tomo, and Tomo's like, oh my bad, I'll get it. And you know, just like friends do, kind of like, uh, and like licks it off her shoulder. Uh, but June is in this like area of his brain where he's trying to reconcile his like best friend being like also wickedly attractive, like for the first time in his life. And so inside, uh, it just like kind of like, uh, Rack focuses to a volcano inside of him. And his teenage hormones going, ah! <laughs> and like, I, I love hard cuts. I love when it's like, ah! and it's like right back into the scene. She's like, what's wrong? Are you okay? And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm cool. <laughs> and like, I think, I, I don't know, I think that's a lovely portrayal of, of how we all feel. Um, one of my favorite scenes is the umbrella scene, and the one where he sees her, her boobs and runs away. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Seeing boobs and running away. I can do that better than anyone. <laughs> Anyway, my question for Eric is, um, what was your- I'm sorry, I'm just- That's hilarious. My experience growing up was the opposite of that, is that anyone with boobs saw me and ran away. <laughs> All right, so, Eric, um, what was your most favorite, uh, I mean, sorry, do you enjoy your, uh, voicing Tahi in movie fights or the series fights, and which is your favorite? The fights? Yeah, my favorite is in Z, where you fight the plant guy. My favorite parts of Sanji is when he's not fighting, but just talking. Because that doesn't hurt. <laughs> yeah, I like when you fight Chris. Sanji is, uh, he, he, he's, uh, so his voice sits lower in my register, which requires me to push more air out when I'm doing the job, uh, which is doubles when he's fighting. And unfortunately, when he's fighting, he's still talking. And uh, honestly, like, like what, like when I get into the booth and it happens, I'm like, oh god, okay, okay, here we go. <laughs> and it's a little anxiety inducing. Uh, my favorite fight of all that he's done is one recently that I can't talk about. Oh. Yeah! I'm so sorry. It's okay, I'll watch to find out. My, okay, my question for all of you, if you're gonna have two or three characters that you would like to see interact with each other in a weird comedy sort of way, who would you choose and why? Two of our characters, two of our characters. Any characters that you voice, you can mix the match if you want. And you can you know, interact with each other in a weird, funny way. Oh man, I want your friends, you got Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we want to hear your friends. Okay, let's go. Wow. <laughs> it's like Dreambout, you can put any two together. Right. There, there are some video game characters that would work well together. That would be funny, like Nikolai from Call of Duty with like Soldier 76 might be funny. <laughs> you know, the like, what is 76? You're in your car? And you're like, all right, have another drink, pal. You're doing fine. <laughs> you're doing great. But you could get really weird. You could get, uh, let's see, Vader with Tasmanian Devil. <laughs> uh, what would be a fun one? Actually, yeah, those two would be, I can see some of those characters getting along. Uh, for comedy, let's see, how about Hulk? How about Hulk? It has to be Hulk. Well, yeah, I think that's all right. I think right. Yeah. there. What would, be, what would be an opposite? What would be a, a ridiculous character with Hulk? Uh, Grunt. What's that? Grunt from Mass Effect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even Sarah could be like that. <laughs> you know? You have problems, man. I know, I know. It's okay. It's all right. Let's go on the road trip together. Yeah, or Zerg would be fun. Zerg and, and, and Hulk on a road trip. That I would do. Um, oh, okay, I, I don't know. I'm thinking about the anime on the brain right now. This is video yeah. game stuff, but like, uh, in, in 
Dragon Ball's universe too. I play a character named Few, for short for Future. He's like time traveling weirdo. Um, he's great. Uh, he he actually does a lot of dream bounds. He'll like teleport people together and be like, what if like Goku fought like other Goku, like murder each other, and then he watches. <laughs> Uh, like him, like time traveling dude already could, could make up for a really cool comedy. But then I, I'm trying to think of like a character, like maybe, I don't know, Isagi. I do a panel sometimes where we like write a whole anime in like an hour. And if we had like Few with Isagi from Blue Lock, because Isagi loves soccer or football, uh, and then Few would like teleport to all the different times, all the different like World Cups, and just like plants him in, because I love like watching old World, World Cup stuff. Any soccer fans in here, by chance? <laughs> okay, sweet. You and me! <laughs> Okay, great. But uh, yeah, um, I love like I would love to see you know put ECB in with Manny Donna as he's doing like the Hand of God kind of thing, like iconic moments, and then like he's like, isn't this crazy? I like watching people fight, but instead of playing soccer, like yeah, yeah, it's like a slice of life time traveling Dragon Ball episode, <laughs> soccer show, sports anime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my choice. I would probably pick. A, a couple of obscure characters like Demon Lord and Desert Punk. Because yeah. they're similar but different and um, also disgusting. <laughs> you like a buddy cop film? Are they like the odd couple? Or? Um, well, they're too similar, so it would be like a buddy cop film if they're exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, no disagreements. Just not, not, not so so they probably wouldn't fight each other. Right? Yeah. 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 Fight everybody else. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. How's it going? Hey, how you doing? Good. Uh, this one's for all of you, but I'd like to start with uh, Fred first on sure. this one. So, oftentimes in your roles, you're asked to do uh, battle screams a lot, especially in some of the, the bigger roles that you do. Um, what are some tips that you have to help protect your voice uh, when you're trying to uh, get to be warm up, or is there a technique? Oh, that yeah, you yeah. just like what we were just talking about. Right, yeah. right. So, uh, you know, yeah, you, exactly. you try to map out what you can do, whether it's an interactive script or, or a movie or a TV show, just you kind of want to know where those spots are. You know, um, video games get tough because there's so many of them, you know. Uh, uh, and just like stunts, like doing physical stunts, you want to limit, kind of know your limitation on what you want to do. Uh, if they're yelling sessions, I like to keep them down to two hours if possible. I know in the old days we did four hours of yelling because we really wanted to, you know, please. And then, but the problem is, right. is that the next day you're like, so eat fresh, you know, because <laughs> <work. laughs> Yeah, I did, oh, I did a bunch of orders. I had to do a subway ad or something the next day. Like, do you have allergies? I'm like, no, I was I was an orc. And they, well, can you please do a subway as work? I'm like, yeah, yeah, subway, eat fresh, and eat back on the menu. <laughs> but uh, no, um, so it's it's uh, oh, uh, drink lots of water. Uh, there are throat remedies, uh, Nim Jong Pei Makoa, I know there's no other name for it, but it's a wonderful Chinese uh, yeah. uh, honey little black yeah, juice. That's the whole thing. Your secret uh, uh, singer saving grace, there's a bunch that are good teas, honey, uh, slippery elm uh, tea is good. Um, and just keep yourself hydrated. I find that warming up is good, but warming down, no one ever does the warm down. When you do a big thing, hum, get back to your breathing. Uh, it's really funny on really bad, hard, hard days. It, it, I sound so silly because I'll be like, just to get my voice back in the center, I have to do a high and a low. So I'll be like, no! You know, like, you know, and it's like, because you're an instrument. Your yeah. voice is a string and an electric instrument. And you want to rosin that bow, you want to make sure the bow is strong. Breath support. I mean, you're talking about the things that you learn as an actor on yeah. stage. There are ways to yell. I, I mean, drill sergeants have it. Oh, you know, okay. what is your mouth? You know, like how to how to yell, but still support yourself and not kill yourself, and and know when you're starting to kill yourself. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one is voice rest is good if you can stop talking, but that's not as much as sleep. I know that nobody can sleep these days, but it's good. I was told by an opera singer to sleep if you have a really rough voice day. Mm -hmm. Pick a time you can do eight to ten hours of just natural sleep breathing. You know. Those are all, I mean, those are, there's many, but definitely I would say the vocal warm up and the warm down. That's a big one. And hydration. Sorry. I have a lot to say about that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> same question? Yeah, same question. So mine is water. Um, uh, everything Fred said is 100%. But uh, for me personally, and because every body is different, and mine tends to function better when it's 
very lubricated, not on uh, bourbon, but water. <laughs> it's a whole different kind of function on bourbon. So I do drink a ton of water. Um, I don't put a whole lot of stuff in it, but I do make sure that it's good quality because, like, I don't drink tap water unless it's filtered because tap water generally has things in it like chlorine and stuff like that to keep it looking pretty and that stuff dries your voice up so <laughs> Some things you can do on one day, so if it is a huge, long, 30-second long Hulk yell where he's being torn asunder atom by atom, that's going to be probably a very demanding line to do. Uh, but because Fred's a pro and he has been with the character for a while, I would say probably the hardest thing is like auditioning for characters that you're not sure the depth of the thing. So you're, you're, you need to do it safely. That's always my number one thing is like never hurt yourself. I actually injured myself. I, I got a hemorrhagic polyp that developed on one of my cords. I had cut off. Uh, I was supposed to be a vocal wrestler for three months. I took a week and was back at work because I'm an idiot. But also, I'm, a, I'm an actor with no insurance and I have to... It's, you guys have been there, you know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. I can either lose my clients or be replaced. Or I, both of those are bad. But you know what I'm saying? I can either uh, be replaced and lose my clients or get back in the booth and do it safely as strong as I can. Um, and that came from vocal fatigue. I was teaching, I had uh, uh, some lead roles I was working, I was uh, I was directing a musical. Uh, yeah, I had I was literally talking from like 8 a.m. to, to 11 p.m. And when I would go to sleep, my chords were like thrumming, uh, just like vibrating by themselves. I don't remember that's weird. And in the middle of a, a fairy tale, a show I was working on, I played a character named Jackal, and he turned into a creature, level one transformation. And so already he was like, let's get explode. He's like, I'm like this. And then he turns into this thing. It's like now I'm even bigger. <laughs> and then it's like, and then he does it again. I was like. What? <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, and I'm trying to swing for the fences because this guy doesn't show up very often. And I was told by, by Tyler, he's like, don't worry, dude, this guy's gonna like, he's gonna spoilers die. It's all good, you know what I mean? And I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm swinging for the fences, but not and this. I knew I could do it, but I did not factor in having spoke for 60 of those hours during the weekend. It came to that moment, and I split my cord, and I I, I, was, like, I was like, in the middle of the take, I was like, and not, no sound came out. I was like. And I went, uh, hey, can I, can I take a second? Can I take a second? And so I was like, yeah, you okay? I'm like, yeah, just a second. I went outside and I was like, all right, let's finish up because I need to go home and not do this right <laughs> uh, So I did it. I could taste the copper, the blood running into my throat. Oh. I was like, oh. And uh, yeah, I've been injured a lot of ways, you guys. I do fight stuff. I do all of it. I've done theater, like, and I've I broken bones. I've done, I mean, oh my God, we were just talking about surgeries and, and replacements <laughs> and things you have. Your body is an instrument. So not to belabor it, but uh, studying and being aware of what you're capable of, knowing your thresholds, and I will say not to be like caution for getting hurt, but it's exciting to like learn you guys and find your thresholds. And actually, like there's other voices you can do, other things, but that's exploratory. You never want to like just throw your body into the volcano. You know what I mean? Like there are small. I study parkour. Sorry, I got so many like my teacher brains kicking in. Um, and there's a thing about. Uh, do you ever see like what a uh, parkourist is? They go like this. There's always this picture of people jumping through the air like this. And it's like, what a stupid thing. Why would you be in the air like this, right? It's actually, and that's the thing, right? Because you don't know. What you're doing is you, you throw your whole body in the air, catapult, right? Because you know that if I send all my energy here, I can now manipulate it. If you keep anything on the back foot, you will hurt yourself. You have to commit fully. Once you're committed fully, when you land, you extend, you absorb, and you throw the energy forward, and you can land safely from two, three-story falls. I've done it. But it takes practice. You do small things first, and you build up to that until it gets in your muscle memory. Then you do the big. So cautionary tale to all my voice actor perspectives out there. Don't just blow your crap up. You need yeah. it. you got to train. So, sorry. Dude, if your body is an instrument, your instrument is the guitar the rock star is smashing on a stage. Yeah, yeah. Amazing! Welcome out! Yeah, I came 
uh, from friends recommended to, to me. Uh, they haven't come, come yet. Uh, but, awesome. What's your name? Uh, my name is uh, Nathaniel. Nice to meet you, Nathaniel. Yeah, I have a question for the Fred. Uh, uh, what was it like uh, playing in the Crash, uh, voicing in the Crash Magic game? The, especially Dingo Dial, you like one of my favorite characters in there. Woo! What was like the, the last part of it? Uh, Dingo Dial. Yeah, Dingo Dial. Yeah, yeah, it was just crazy. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, it was just. It was. We had so much fun because I didn't realize how much comedy they were going to do. Like how crazy that was going to be. Uh, and I love that he's a chef. <laughs> you know, making horrible things. No, it's, it's it's it was really like I couldn't believe that how much how much improv and comedy we were allowed to do. I was so I was so thrilled to do it. Yeah. Can I ask anything else? <laughs> <laughs> That's all you have to say is you had fun and you enjoyed doing the comedy. No, I, I, I didn't know, I, I didn't, again, I just didn't know how far they were going to take it. I really didn't care um, uh, And I'll, I'll be talking in the, in the voice that. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was, it, was, it, was, it was quite cool. I would have loved to have done it in a group though. A lot of times, you know, we, I just did it by myself and so sometimes I miss, I miss the interaction with everybody, but we had it. Thank you, okay, yeah. appreciate you. Okay. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Great question. I hope I answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. Hi, this is my first time. Oh, no, you're oh, yes. oh, so brave. I would never, like, you guys are so brave. Oh, hello. <laughs> video. Oh, I mean, it looks like people are doing that all the time, so I guess. <laughs> I'm like, not you, though. No, <laughs> no cameras. No. <laughs> hello. I have a question to Eric. Sure. Have you seen the Ace Attorney memes? I uh, don't think so. One thing says objection. Just objection? Yes. Objection! Like yes. that? Yes. You know, I play uh, the intro character in Ace Attorney. Yeah. I didn't know, like, I know very little about the game. I bought it on DS and I lost right away because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. But like, uh, my character ostensibly, I guess, knocks you out. That way you lose your memory and you have to relearn how to lawyer. Like, I'm the excuse of something Worthington. He's got a very foppish name. Anyway, but that, that's my whole connection with Ace Attorney. But apparently people are so passionate about the franchise, dude. Like, all, have you played any of the games? No, I tried to. I tried that's to. That's what I'm saying. Like, oh. No, I, I mean, I may have gotten the wrong game because I downloaded it on my uh, Xbox. And I'm like, I should probably learn how to play this game. And I'm following the game and it's like, Hey, if you think this happened, you know, if you think this happened, press A, and the only option is A, and I'm like, A? <laughs> and they're like, oh yeah, here's all this other stuff, and blah, 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 press A. I'm like, so it's just a book that I read and press the button when I want to get to the It's a visual novel, yeah. You know, and I was lost, and so I stopped playing it, because there are other games where you can shoot people. <laughs> you can play as Fred. So, yeah, uh, but I, I do like the bloopers. The bloopers are my favorite thing. Uh, yes! I find that to be my greatest work that I've done. <laughs> <laughs> the Ace Attorney bloopers, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you ever, ever watch those? Yes, yeah. I did. Great. Yeah. Good. Uh, All right. Then so you're doing right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank yeah, so I was Master Shifu for many years. Yeah. What a great honor. Yes. You are the Dragon Warrior, and you will always be the Dragon Warrior. That was a funny <laughs> Dustin Hoffman made a movie, you know, so it was a real trip to try to do his, try to get his take and then kind of continue on. What was that? Yeah, uh, uh, Kung Fu Panda. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, no, it, it's so weird. <laughs> it's a weird thing that when you have a voice that already exists and you're trying to carry it on and then try to make it Kind of fit for the series. Yeah. That was a very, it was actually a very big challenge. When you start with Dustin Hoffman, you know, you got an ear and he's being kind of this, you know, out of kind of kung fu movie, you know, no, oh, 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 that is not right. You know, then you have to kind of <laughs> evolve it. It was really, it was, a, it was a fun challenge. It's really fun when you have, have you ever had to do that, uh, Eric, at all? Like when you have like a, a character or someone's like a zap thing, you're trying to like fall, hear their choices. I did that yeah, for the late James Billy, and I was doing like, like, I was like listening to his choices and being like, oh, he wants to go there, I'm going there. Yeah, 
you know what I mean, kind of mapping out how the actor sort of is like doing it. I've had to do that for Libra. Oh, really? A few oh. times. Jason Lee. Oh, yeah. You guys know Jason Lee. Woo! Yeah. I've had, I've had to take over Jason's roles in some things and some, and he's had to take over some of my roles. That's crazy. For, for different reasons. But yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah great question. Yeah. Thank you. Objection. Objection! <laughs> That's right. Woo! 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 Great answer that. Great guys have great questions. Hello. 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 Hi. Um, I'm, uh, I'm actually an 80s child, so... <laughs> nice. But anyway, I have one question for Eric, but it can also apply to all friends y'all. No, all just two. only Eric. Just me. <laughs> you will answer as Eric. Go. Anyway, uh, I'm a huge Fruit Basket fan, so I was very happy when the reboot happened. But the question is, is uh, I... Bruce Banner made me laugh a lot. Like um, I was like Toru once when the Hataharu natural hair color oh. thing came up. Oh. I, it went over my head at first. It took me several years to get it. <laughs> but how hard was it during the funnier scenes to keep a straight face when you're voicing your line? And this can apply to all three of y'all. <laughs> um, in anime, it's different because the thing that makes you laugh. Uh, and generally speaking in acting, it's been my experience, is that the thing that makes you laugh is looking at the other actor who's trying to not laugh. <laughs> That's hysterical. Yeah, <laughs> but in anime, you work alone. And when I was recording most of Fruits Basket, uh, it was during the pandemic. So there was nothing funny in my office. <laughs> and, you know, I some pictures of my kids and my cats asleep in front of me and I'm like, you know, I would just do the job. <laughs> you know, if you get another actor, another person in front of you, like even the director who would be trying to do that, keep it together, it would, it, it, you, that energy would pull off of each other. So it was actually pretty easy for me just because of the time in which we recorded it. And the anime thing about recording by yourself. You know? Like I can see him looking at me right now. <laughs> <laughs> It's that, it's that thing, you know, the eye contact. Yes. The best part about being on a stage <laughs> is trying to not laugh. Yeah. I play a, a character in Fruits Basket named Hitoshi. And I guess, like, when you ask about a challenge of, like, laughing at stuff, so I'm like, oh, yeah, kyo kyo. I'm like, I don't know, what is this? What is, like, I don't know the world because I haven't seen it. Guys, I watch a lot of anime, I play a lot of video games. Fruits Basket is still in cute, all right? Like, <laughs> and I act for backwards, too, because I'm like, I entered this property at a time where I'm like, okay, what do I need to know to do the job? And then also, like, if this thing actually captures me as like a viewer, let me let me check it out, see how I like it, you know what I mean? But yeah, we're asked to do so many different things. Yeah, it's true, I, I, especially like uh, working on a show like Archer, or a lot of comedy stuff I work on, or even making sounds. Sometimes things come out you just don't expect, or you just say a line on Family Guy, and you just like, I didn't have to laugh, I just laugh, I get it out of my system. <laughs> You know, and then I try to get through the line. There are some lines that are so hard to get through. And there, I, I find I have to double down on my focus and not listen to myself, if that makes sense. Like, don't hear how funny this is. Just be real. <laughs> I've even hurt my finger. I've been, like, I've been like trying to not laugh and stuff. But you're right. Like, even when we did Avengers, for some reason, Roger Craig Smith and Travis Willingham and I, I just laugh. Like, Travis just, Thor and Hulk could not look at each other at all. Because <laughs> they would just be like, yeah, well, okay, Goldilocks, you know, and he'd be like, listen, friend. And, and like, and it was just weird, like, anytime we'd look, it would just, it would ruin it. Like, I kind of, <laughs> so yeah, you have to find focus and ways around it, because you do have to get the line out. Um, you're right, on stage, it's, it's the hardest stuff. Oh my god. I did a, a, a Shakespeare, that I think, yeah, it was uh, Midsummer Night's Dream or something, where we're like, the, where the theater girl yeah. looked down, and I couldn't look at this friend of mine. I just, he looked so silly. We looked so dumb. Oh, yeah. And it's like, sometimes, especially when it's a visual, it's like, oh, this is stupid, this is stupid. I can't, I can't look at you so and do this line. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, you know, especially if an actor's like, doing some weird, <laughs> yes, you know, like, thing, thing. <laughs> it's like, dude, stop. Uh, I have, uh, I did a, have y'all ever done a black and white show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, uh, I, I did a black and white show in my early 20s. It was with Chris Kaysen. Oh, shit. Okay. And Chris Kaysen, another actor, director, uh, he and I were downstage left. So, basically, here, right? And for 20 minutes, we had to stand there, and we were both playing actors, and we had to stand there and have a 20 minute conversation 
while a whole bunch of other crap happened on stage. And this is something that nobody out here could hear. And it was torture. Because most of it, and that's where I learned the small fart, which is one of my favorite things to do to another actor, which is this. Yes. And so he would small fart his way through the 20 minute conversation on stage, and that was all I could do to just keep it together. God, so and just the ridiculous small talk. How are you? I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> is your, how is your white wife? Is still dead? She's okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, things are going okay. I've been sick. <laughs> you know, like, like, what are they talking about? It's so much fun. I imagine doing that show multiple times and then anticipating when small fart was going to be engaged. Because I imagine I would try to never use it. I would be there improv with you. And the second I see that your eyes are about to do it, I turn away, I try to like not acknowledge it. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. Something, you know? yeah. And he, he would change it up, like he would... Like pitch? He would change everything. What? Like he would change his blocking sometimes. And I'm like, why are you on my right? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? Just to mix it up. Just to mix it up. Do it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. So there's lots of things. Okay, question. <laughs> perfect weekend for it. If any of y'all can perfect this, when you get on an elevator and the doors are closed, and I have done this to my wife a lot, her name's Elise, the doors will close, it's real quiet, and I'll go, huh? Elise, hi, we're in an elevator. And then everyone else is like, somehow I'm still married. I don't know. <laughs> How's it going? Good, how's it going? Good. Um, I had a question um, for the entire group. Um, well, kind of a two-part. What was your, like, a scene that you had to do that almost made you laugh? And what was a scene that you had to do that almost made you cry? Scene that made you laugh, scene that made you cry. Hmm. I, I go first easy. Uh, see, it, it, it did, not almost, it made me cry. Uh, My Hero Academia season four at the end when uh, Miriam says goodbye to Sir Night Eye. Uh, that was, we did that one take, I had to do it because uh, Sabbath had to get in there and we were like, we're running behind on time. And it's okay, Rico only has like five cues. Oh crap, it's this very powerful emotional thing. <laughs> And you're gonna do it in 10 minutes. And I was like, it's cool. That's how life is. You never get to say goodbye to like, like, literally, though, I'm being real. Like, you're lucky if you get to say goodbye to people you care about. And so, this is how life is. Like, I, like I'm being real. Uh, at American Players Theater, I was like working on Rosa Grands and Gilstern are dead. I get a phone call. At, it's a great show. Uh, I get a phone call. My brother's like, hey, it's time. We're saying goodbye to Grandma. And I'm like, okay. So I get on the phone. I step outside. I'm like, uh, and my brother's weeping, he's there, he's like, can you say what you want to say, you know, so I, I'm there and I hear the phone kind of jostle and I'm like, I love you, don't be scared, I'll see you again one day, I love you, words fail, right, when you say to someone you're saying goodbye to, and I'm like, uh, well, you know, and my brother gets on, he's like, right, because uh, my grandfather's too scared to do this, sometimes my brother's doing a thing to, like, say goodbye to her. After all of that moment to say goodbye, like we don't usually get that, right? So a little bit of Rico experience coming into the booth for that, but I always try to ex like get out of here, like because this is Mirio's moment where he gets to come in. If you haven't seen the show, spoilers. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Mirio comes in and uh, just uh, yeah, just opening your heart to it and, and saying you know uh, what, what you feel. Which uh, again, I already spoiled some of it, but it's a really emotional scene. Funny thing, Alexis Tipton was sub directing. Colleen, so she wasn't even supposed to be there. She was like, okay, so what are we doing? Now? Oh my god. <laughs> she kept apologizing. I'm so sorry, but we're gonna keep it. We did it in one take, and that was it. Like I just did it and then I went I did uh, one piece. So I went I was laughing and joking. And then Brandon reported after me, who plays her night at McKinnis. We see each other in the hall and just pull each other to the <laughs> Speaking about seeing an actor, because we never get to see each other usually after something like this. Yeah. And uh, I saw him and he was just like, you did so good. And we're like crying on each other. Uh, part that almost made me laugh, or made me laugh. I worked on this show called Legendary Hero is Dead. My guy's like, yes. oh, that's so good! Nice. <laughs> Thanks, bro! <laughs> I was like, I don't know, either. The, the main character, you guys, is something else. He loves thighs. But a lot of people <laughs> are working out with Blake Shockin, and then Alexis Stiftin's working, playing opposite me. They're letting me just go ham. Oh yeah, and then, like, so between that and, like, Zombieland Saga, I usually get to improv whatever I once, kind of, I shouldn't say that I say quotes around it. I always, if I'm cracking myself up and like in tears, where I say like, 
okay, it's time to give me that sweet princess eye water because I want to drink her tears, literally, to give me water. And I'm like, yeah, girl, give me that sweet shit. And I'm like, why did you come all country? I'm like, oh, man. It's like Sling Blade or something. Like, and, then, and, then we, and then we start talking about it, and then we laugh, and now we've gone, we've gone down the rabbit hole. Like, I can't, guys, I can't. I'm like, anything's making me laugh. I need to shut the, I need to shut the F up right now. Focus. I'm like, the, give me that set, princess. I'm like, no, 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 just keep fucking. Yeah, give me that set, princess. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, there we go. Keep it good. Like, outside, I'm laughing. That's my, that's my stuff. Ah, crying, I don't cry. Laughing, never. <laughs> I would be, it would be the end of Fruits Basket the second time. Uh, the uh, laughing would be all of Ace Attorney. Yes. <laughs> and that's how the bloopers ended up. The bloopers were just me just doing whatever I wanted to do, like I'd be like, this dialogue is stupid. I want to write something that's insane and unusable. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how that happens. I, I laugh and cry almost all the time, uh, simultaneously. So that's, a, no, I, it's true. I'm crying on the inside right now. Um, no, uh, I'd say for crying, uh, Troll Hunter, one of them, uh, there have been a few, but uh, Troll Hunters, I played, Arr! and there's a scene where uh, Toby, my wingman, as uh, a uh, kid, is getting destroyed, getting killed, and, and there, I had to emit some sounds of just absolute anguish and sadness, and it brought me there. I was just a wreck by the end of that, because we had been through so much together, and now it's ending, you know, the Toro, you know, we're going to end tragically, <laughs> you know, it's going to be tough, you know, you know, he doesn't pull any punches, and it's like, oh, that destroyed me. Laughter, one thing that comes to mind was a Nickelodeon thing where I was working with John DiMaggio, who makes me laugh I, I, constantly, and one of my characters had to, who had an ability to fart out the table of the elements, so I made him very sophisticated, and I said, all right, here we go, carbon. And John makes these, <laughs> had to do whatever the sound was that I was like, I don't know, helium. That's no, helium. And it was like a talent show. And I couldn't hold it together. That, there's a recording of that out there, and we just, I couldn't, I, I lost it. <laughs> that's right, to be very serious. You know, like a Paul Freeze type haunted mansion oh, character. Yeah. You know, doing that is just ridiculous. <laughs> All right, so we have five minutes. We'll be answering. Let's answer, let's make sure, let's see if we can get through everybody in the line. And if you want, find us at the tables and uh, we'll answer questions. Yeah. All right. Hello, nice to see you all for the first Hi. time. Good uh, Quick question for Fred. Just want to ask, do you have any fun stories in the booth when you were voicing Nikolai? Nikolai, always, especially when all the three guys, when I was with the other guys. So yeah, it was all the payoff. And being drunk in Nikolai was most fun. <laughs> and they let me go crazy. Yes, yes. And, and, and working with those guys is, is like hilarious because we could bounce off each other very much. And making up horrible things about, yes, that was my fourth wife. She had a very good plow person. Yes. You know, like, it was all very like, ridiculous, like improv stuff. Yes. So it was, was fun Thank with those guys. You. Thanks. Thanks. Any help? Most people already asked all the questions I had, but um, when the guy asked you for the objection, I was not recording. Can you do it like one more time? Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Ready? Are you rolling? I, I am. Please stand by. There we go. I'll record you too. I'm rolling. You guys are recording. All right. Not that big right there. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here at the video recording. Objection! Pretty much any time they said the word butts. <laughs> lots, lots, lots of farts on this panel, just so you guys know. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hi, Fred. Uh, big fan. I always enjoy your work. Uh, and my question is, what are your thoughts about Tom Kane suffering a stroke back in 2019? Well, what are your opinions about my, that? My, it's one of anger, um, and one of great hope. I, I, I want to see him through. Um, he's, he's doing really well, thank God. But I just want him to get full recovery. Everyone in the world is supporting, pulling for him. Uh, we love him. He was not just, he is not, one of the greatest voice actors 
you know, around. Uh, truly, uh, uh, but a wonderful human being. And we are, uh, it was frustrating and shy. He's a dear friend, and it just it pissed me off, quite frankly. But we are pushing for him. We are pushing for him. We love him so dearly. And I will tell him, hopefully, you can see this, because he's got a lot of people pushing for him. He's doing great, though. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for bringing him up. I really enjoyed you as Code Pro and Zombie Island Saga. Oh, thanks. Um, but it requires like a lot of like screaming and fast talking. I can tell us so, like what was the hardest part of recording that character? Uh, too many options. Uh, Miyano Mamoru is a uh, contestant, like one of the best voice actors in Japan. Uh, when I was do doing that gig, they were I remember I was cautioned. They're like, careful, we're gonna cast you as this, and people are gonna like hate <clears throat> you because the guy they wrote this role for him. I was like, cool. Uh, it's fun, but like the great thing is, is that it, the when you again kind of like working from another actor in the Japanese, you can hear what they're going for, where the energy is, and I was like, oh, gloves are off. And I remember asking my director, like, is it okay? Is it okay? Can I go? Can I go? And they're like, I mean, he's doing it. I'm like, let's go. So yeah, a lot of improvisation. We would just make up things like coffee noodle, do your job. That one was like I did that wild after they were just rolling. Oh, can you guys just roll? You know, you have to sizzle on top of whatever tabletop, you know, cook and do your job! Like, uh, it was very, they were like, I guess that's going in, and we'll see if production lets it through. And they let everything through. I was like, all right, I guess we've established our relationship. Uh, yeah, we'll start. Oh. Um, for Eric, uh, what was your favorite, if you could choose one, your favorite Ace Attorney Blooper? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's the Jesus Christ one. <laughs> and that's because it's an acting thing. Because there's a scene where they're all they're 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 praying uh, to their God, I forget exactly what the context is, but they're they're praying to solve a, a crime. And it just fit perfectly for me to say, I forget exactly how it went, but uh, you know, please help us Jesus Christ, right? And it fit in perfectly. But the acting thing is was the inflection. Because it wasn't, please help us, Jesus Christ. It was, please help us, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was my favorite. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, hello. Hello, hello. Hello. All right. I'm the alternative. I'm going to question for Fred real quick. Do you remember doing a voice in the Yakuza spinoff, Judgment? Because my friend's been playing uh, Judgment for me recently, and when I heard your voice as Hamura just talking utter smack to the, to the main character, my jaw was on the floor. You're asking, do I do that voice who? Oh, did you remember boy, doing that voice? Doing for, for uh, which voice? Hamura for in the Yakuza spinoff, Judgment. Yes. Yes. Yes, I do remember. I know what you're talking about. I'm so sorry. <laughs> My brain is like, wait, wait, wait. We're going to go past this. We're going to go past this. We're going to go past this. Smash! Thanks. Thank you, man. Thank you for recalling that. Thank you. Hello. Bring us home. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I have just a question for all three of you. Um, it's more of a, I guess, a professional question. Actually, it's a two-parter. Um, what was your inspiration to becoming actors, and what has been your most favorite role that you've ever done throughout your entire career? Not the one that everyone loves, because we all love you for who you are, but what was your personal favorite role that you wanted to do that just said, YES, THIS IS ME! Mm -hmm. Inspiration for being uh, becoming an actor, thank you not for not just saying that stuff, I was not just, <laughs> but people say voice actor. Because like, we do a lot of stuff, there's a lot of things we do. Uh, but inspiration to become an actor, uh, I would say, it, it, Connecting people through story. Uh, I think it's a really beautiful thing, whether it's video games, animation, uh, whatever medium, and these conventions are kind of a, a emblematic of that, that when you see someone who's from, you know, Samurai Champlain, like, ah, you know what I mean? Like, something that's dear, near and dear to you, uh, you connect in that way. I think that's really special. I quickly figured out that's what I want to do with my whole essence. Uh, and then uh, number two, what uh, character, I guess it has to be Mirio. A lot of people uh, say, like, Mirio from uh, my hero is a lot like me. I have a crazy long story about having to, uh, having to do CPR, this little girl, before recording the Harry stuff. Uh, she survived, which is great. But I remember being like, whoa, life's crazy, and art's crazy, and art imitates life, but also vice versa. So, yeah, I choose that. <laughs> <laughs> you just said the phrase, she survived, which is great, which implies that there's an opposite to that. <laughs> she survived, which is too bad. But <laughs> 
someone live? I mean, I just, I, 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 I just talked about it. Okay. <laughs> it's scary, it's scary, you guys. So, uh, uh, inspiration to become an actor was, uh, we were talking about this before, where I grew up in Beaumont and there was nothing to do but go to the movies because it was so hot all the time. And so I went to the movies and the summer of 84 was a magical time in theaters. There's so many good movies released yeah. that summer. And I went all the time. I was in the theaters multiple times a day, or like Fred and I were talking about, you go to the theater, pay for one ticket, and just bounce theater to theater all day long. And uh, that summer I realized that, that was Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. And I'm like, oh my god, I want to be an archaeologist. <laughs> and then fast forward a few weeks and I'm like, oh crap, no, I want to be an actor and pretend to be an archaeologist. <laughs> So that was kind of what, I, that, and also the fact that the kid, uh, Hugh Kwan, who plays Short Round, is my, he's my age. And so watching a kid on screen acting who's my age, I'm like, oh man, that, that's inspirational. And uh, I got to meet him a few years ago and thank him for that, which is super cool. That's, uh, that's what was the second part? What was your favorite uh, Oh, my favorite character I've ever played? Uh, I got, it was a small theater production. And I directed it as well, but I got to play the lead in uh, Bengal Tiger at the Baghdad Zoo, which is a fantastic play. And I got to play the tiger, which is the, just the coolest role. It's so crazy. And uh, I got to do that, which was, was awesome. Mike in that? Mike in that? No, 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 actually, probably nobody that you know. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I that I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> That's, a <laughs> That's a hard answer, man. That's a, like the favorite thing. But I got there's ones that come to mind. Uh, Planet Sheen, I love playing the Emperor, just because he was so ridiculous. And I got to really get crazy improv going on that one. And uh, um, having a lot of fun with uh, Lieutenant Shax on Star Trek, um, just because I get to do that and a bunch of other aliens. And I'm, that's a project that I love working on. Also, Ask the Story Bots, uh, I love because it's really great education for, for kids and adults. And I've really got a chance to. To do, I play blue. I mean, bang on that, but like I play uh, a lot of different things on it. But I just love that project because it's just so interesting, and I learn something when I work on it. Um, becoming an actor for me, an actor, I, I just love the idea. I always was doing voices. I was always felt like this gray uh, shapeshifter growing up. Like I just wanted to be somebody else, and I never. And I, I realized, wait, I can't be. Why? And I had a lot of great home playing all these different characters. You know, I just loved impersonating uh, folks and animals. And I just loved shape shifting, and I, I didn't realize it could be a great career. career. But uh, yeah, so that's what really was the idea of just being able to embody a spirit. Really, really, really turned me on. <laughs> I love doing it. So that's, that's, yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! Yeah. You did it. Is this the first ever people that Great questions, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Everyone gathers, so we take a quick selfie real fast thing. All right. You don't say it? You want to try? You want to try? No. You don't want to do it? We don't want to do it. Okay, it's all good. Oh, yeah, that's right. I guess I did you, dude. I guess I did you. Okay, here we go. All right. Chug, chug. Hi, friends. Here, I don't know. Eric's got longer arms than me. You can push the button. Okay, yeah, here. Ready? 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 Here we go. I'm just going to take them. Make cool faces, everyone. Yay! Yay! Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Come see us at the table. We've got more questions and such. We've been autographs all day today. Have a good call, you guys. Thank you. You too. All right.